Hello and welcome to Winging It. So we are back, we have another live com game here today. And yet again, from the Indian Skimmer Skirmish, uh, we are safely out of the Swiss style stage and through into the knockouts. Uh, finished in the top 16, so we got our first round by. We've been sat here patiently waiting and uh, we have an opponent ready and waiting for us in Dr. Grainslove. So, Dr. Grainslove, get through their first round match, no issues at all. Uh, and yeah, coming up against us here in the second round. So we flipped, we're going second in this game one, of course. Now we're in the knockouts. It's a best of three. So um, yeah, always a little bit different when you're doing best of three versus just kind of playing someone one off. Um, obviously, they'll go first here. We'll go first in game two. And then, yeah, if there's a deciding game three, it'll be whoever has the most points over those first two games. So. Uh, yeah, very interesting tray here. Going second, uh, obviously, Benelli's Eagle sat right there staring at you. Um, always always an interesting um, dilemma, I suppose, when that bird comes in the tray. Um, so early on, it's, uh, yeah, not the kind of bird you want early on, but it's, uh, it's so tricky to leave that and know that your opponent can grab it. And then, you know, later in the game, that's just a huge point bomb. Uh, but I think it is maybe complicated a bit here by the fact that it's also the Red Wing Blackbird. So that could definitely be quite a nice pickup uh, for either of us, depending, of course, on the starting hand. So, um, yeah, it's going to depend a lot on uh, on what Dr. Grainslove has in their hand. You know, if they have a crow or a hummingbird or mute swan, it'd be very hard not to grab that Blackbird. Um, that's just such a tempting one to go for. So, yeah, um, I don't know. We'll see. I suppose it would depend a bit on my hand as well, which one of those I prefer. But um, like I say, Benelli's Eagle. It's um, yeah, it's a hard, it's a hard bird to rank early game. I mean, we had this problem. Um, me and Tayre when we were put together the tier list. If you haven't seen that, I'll put a link to it in the card in the top right hand corner. Um, but yeah, Benelli's Eagle. And Eastern Imperial Eagle, that they're so hard to rank early game because you don't want to play them early game. But in my experience, if they're in the tray, they're going to get grabbed. They're in a starting hand, you're going to keep it. You know, you're going to cost yourself that one turn or maybe that one bit of food that you might be able to keep in the starting hand um, to be able to get Benelli's Eagle or Eastern Imperial Eagle because they're just so good. And you know that later in the game, I'm going to play that and that's going to be you know 10 or 11 points. Maybe more if you've got a bonus card or particularly that last in a round goal. I mean, who cost to play birds? That's a that's a really good one for those kind of birds. But yeah, just to be able to get that huge point bomb um, without actually needing any food for it. You just draw a bunch of cards and tuck the bad ones under it. It's, uh, it's really, really nice. So here we go. We can take a look at our own starting hand. And there we go. Orduin's goal. Very, very nice. So... What has Dr. Grayslove kept? They've gone for three foods and two birds. So I would kind of anticipate that, as I say, Bernelli's Eagle is going to be the one grabbed and I'm going to be left that blackbird. Oh, and we've even got citizen scientists. Might be able to make that work, to be honest. Might be able to make that work. So yeah, kind of initial thoughts, definitely Orduin's goal. Assume that the blackbird's going to be left. If I can pick that up. But then it's a bit of a tricky for what else to go for because really good card access um, and potentially if I do get that blackbird that will sort me out for eggs as well. Um, but yeah, the food is going to be the struggle so it might just be a case of keep the one extra food so I think maybe in this case I would keep the worm uh, as the food I don't use to, to play the Orduin's goal. And then I'm looking for a nice cheap forest bird and even like a hummingbird or, or a crow or something like I was saying before to go in that wetlands would be good so um, yeah feels like feels like a full tuck is maybe on the cards um, yeah Alduin Skull and Blackbird we just put that down we can just dig for a bit getting you know three points a turn with that um, and you know who knows maybe I find a mute swan maybe I find a chiff chaff that's kind of maybe making me think I should keep this pipe of greed but I don't know I don't think I'm going to necessarily need that, so. Yeah, I don't know. It would be a gamble. 
it would be much safer to say do this, keep the Grebe, and then maybe I don't get the Blackbird, maybe I get Benelli's Eagle instead. I can still play Gull and Grebe. I think I'd rather have the extra food. I think I'm going to see a lot of cards. Um, I'll be able to find more wetland birds. Food is going to be a struggle. So we're going to keep Citizen Scientist as unusual as it might seem. And we're going to go from there. So, yeah. Nest Box Builder felt less likely to be able to, to hit that. No real birds in sight uh, to be able to manage that. But even if I just get four on Citizen Scientist, you know, it's not bad for three points. Um, I'm going to have at least two, you know, unless... I don't want to jinx it, but unless we have like a Brant or a Stilt or a Carolina Wren, and I don't get either of those two birds, <laughs> I should have at least two that work towards it. So there we go, he did take the Nellie's Eagle. As tempting as that white back woodpecker is, I really need this red winged blackbird. So um, yeah, I'm going to grab that. I'm going to grab that. And if that woodpecker is still there, that would be an absolute dream for me to get my hands on, <laughs> if I'm completely honest. That's going to be the food sorted, but... Okay, they did take it as expected. Um, do you know what? I'm going to leave that sap sucker, but I'm going to do what I said I was going to do. So we'll go fish rodent. I uh, want to play the golf burst so that I can lay eggs on it. That helps for um, better tempo. I don't like playing blackbird and laying eggs on it. Uh, but it also helps for this end of round. So I am at least going to have one for that. Um, normally in a full tuck, you kind of don't set yourself up well for end of rounds um, these ones in particular are not great for a full tuck but who knows we can work our way through it, we can work around it um, but yeah definitely that sap sucker if I can I can pick that up once the wetlands is set up, once it's kind of more efficient for me to do that um, then I can easily just grab a, a cherry in the feeder and play it so um, yeah Dr. Grace left with the rough so that's a that's a really nice one to get early um, yeah, that's going to be good for just cycling cards, around end, should have no problem maxing that out. We're going to play the Redwing Blackbird, and here we go, Wetlands is done, for now at least. Um, like I say, three points a turn, I'm going to be seeing two cards and then another two with the order in skull. Um, yeah, it's just going to be a really strong setup. And like I say, it's just, can I find a Mute Swan, can I find a Chiff Chaff? Just any other tucking birds. Um, something to get a bit of food would be nice. Um, but we'll kind of see. So, yeah, I think Grace Love is just going to be doing a bit of digging. Have a set. Might not be terrible. Might not be terrible, but we'll definitely. Oh, will we definitely? Because I'm going to have to tuck the other set. We'll go one more. Ooh, that might actually be better. Oh, that's a tricky one. Um. That is a tricky one. <clears throat> I think I think I'm going to be okay for eggs, so we'll get rid of the upper set for now. Man, I wish I would have drawn one of those two before. Um, yeah, I'm not going to play either of those, so um, I'll just keep the roller. But yeah, this Oriole could be nice. Um, that could be very nice. Big points, get a bit more food going. Uh, Helps for all the end of rounds potentially, so okay, Cooper's Hawk. Um That's weird that he would play the Cooper's Hawk. Oh, I suppose he only had the rodent, didn't he? But I imagine he's gonna want to get food for this uh whiteback woodpecker, which means one of those cherries is gonna go. So I'm thinking I'll take one cherry. If the other one's still there, I grab the Oriole. Oh, I grab it. And play the Oriole. Otherwise, I've got the food for the sap sucker. Um, so I can look to get that down when needed, but um yeah, I would ideally not have a full blackbird. There we go, there goes the cherry. Um going into the next round because I want to draw first turn, but Forcer's turn not bad. Get some more action going in the wetlands. So we'll grab the sap sucker, we'll tuck the roller. Well, there's the white star, so I could have been patient. I could have been patient. Because um, that white star is... I mean, it's the same power as the sap sucker, but I'm definitely better now. Yeah, I'm not sure seeing more cards at the moment is needed with the storm petrol, so I will take the white star. 
I will take the white star, and I think I'll play. I'll play at least one of these. Um, I'll play at least one of these. Probably will be Sapsucker because I do have the food for it. Um, but I could easily play White Star and then maybe Oriole later. That might that might not be terrible. But um, yeah, like I said, I do kind of want to want to play a bird here so that I can draw cards um, next round if it's efficient for me to do so. Uh, so yeah, let's. Let's play White Star. Let's play White Star because Sapsucker doesn't help for any of the end of rounds other than the last one for a little bit more, but I can maybe get the Oriole down sooner. I would like that because I think I think Grades Love, we know he's got that uh, White Back Wapeka. He's drawn a bunch more cards. I think food he's going to be okay for. It's about drawing cards and yeah, obviously Pinelli in the back pocket is nice. So uh, if I do give a bit of free food away with the Oriole, I'm not so worried. So. We'll play the white start. Um, and yeah, like I say, look to draw cards um, in that in that round two. Hopefully something nice in the tray is uh, is going to be sat there for us. But yeah, this rough, this rough. Who knows what it's going to get, but I think, I think I saw a house finch there. I think I saw a house finch, so. We are good to go. We are going to grab that house finch. Um, and yeah get rid of get rid of I think probably the Forster's tear. I think I'm going to see enough cards ooh now white throat swift white throat swift could be good for a late game pivot and of course does help citizen scientist um, but the crossbow helps with this end of round it's not an obvious one I think I think, I think I will go for the Swift. Just keep my options open. And then I'm thinking what I do is... Grains Love is almost certainly going to play the Woodpecker. So I think I want to go for food. Yeah, there's the Woodpecker. I'm going to go for food. I'm going to get rid of this Sapsucker. And... If I take two food here, I can look at forcing down um, this Oriole, which is good for this end of round because I do need something. I can then take food. Um, this Oriole will give me a cherry, and hopefully, I mean, there's some seeds there, so hopefully I can, yeah, grab one of those. And then I'll be able to get the house finch down. I'll have a worm in reserve for the swift or whatever else I might find uh, when doing a bit of digging. So, yeah, this is going pretty well, all in all. Um, so, yeah, get Oriol down, added uh, bonus, clears out an next piece on the blackbird, which we are going to have to manage um, for now at least. But we'll see. I think we're going to be okay. We're in a, we're in a strong position. Got good food access, got really good card access, got good points going in the grasslands later in the game, potentially with the Swift. Um, and yeah, already in this wetlands, you know, with the with the house finch down, that's a, that's a four four point activation. So we'll take our two food. Yeah, there we go. Grains have got so much food. I don't I don't really mind throwing a cherry his way. Um, I can I can live with that. And yeah, we'll get this house finch down. And there we go, with House Finch and Swift, that Citizen Scientist lower bound at least done, so. Things we don't mind is uh, getting Citizen Scientist without even really having to try. Alright. Ooh, Blue Throat, excellent. Excellent. I don't mind that. Again, as much as I don't mind throwing some free cherries his way. If he's going to throw a bit of food my way with that Blue Throat, I'm all for it. More turns giving me food. Gives me more turns to just draw cards, get points. I don't have to worry about using the forest. Um, that's good as far as I'm concerned. There we go. We get a fish. So Three fish. Have we got a puffin? Have we got an egret? Something like that maybe for the end of round? I suppose we'll find out. But I could take this osprey. I'm kind of toying with the idea. Skimmer probably can go. Um, it is at least something for the end of round. But like I say... I, I think I'm going to lose this end of round. I'm not really 
super invested in it now, that Barrow's Golden Eye, that's probably better. So don't mind seeing that. This auto in Scarlet's just not going to give me good cards, but that's fine. That's fine. But yeah, we've coincidentally got the exact food to play this Golden Eye. Um, it's going to help us see more cards. It's going to get some free eggs as well. Um, we do have the Oriole down for the nest type there, so I might play that. I might play that. Okay, American White Pelican. Not really the bird I was expecting, um, but given given that Grain Stuff has not drawn cards yet this round, he only did one tuck on the rough last round, so I don't think he's got many cards. He's got the fish. I think he's going to draw cards here. And I think we're going to be able to get a tie on the end of round by playing the Skull Knight. So we will do that. And yeah, I think his only egg source is in the grasslands right now. He is going to have to lay eggs. If he wants to play more birds, that's going to give us some free points. So um, don't mind the Gold Knight there. Just need to find cavity nest space, I suppose. That's where the, the Swift maybe comes in a little bit as well. But yeah, this is this is not looking too bad. This is not looking too bad. We've got egg space on that grackle. Um, we've got good point scoring in that wetlands there. Um, actually, to be fair, not looking bad for that second end of round. Um, got to bear in mind that Benelli's is still up the sleeve, uh, but I think he'll want to save that for the last end of round. Um, you know, you don't want to you don't want to cost yourself rough tucks early on by. Um, by playing Benelli, so I think he did draw cards there because we saw the tucks on um, Pelican, and I think I could see a Kilder in the tray. I can, and a Waxwing, so that's not what you like to see. Um, definitely not what you like to see. Kildir, Waxwing, Blue Throat is a pretty scary combo, but it is round three. Uh, I do already have um, this Barrow's Golden Eye down as a bit of a defense, so I don't know. Maybe he will go for it. There we go, he has. Oh, we got a Dunnock, so Dunnock could definitely be nice. Dunnock could definitely be nice. Um, yeah, I'm kind of thinking about this little bustard as well. If we do get a bit of free food, it's not a bad way to you know, get an egg somewhere and get a bonus card. So we'll tuck the Nutcracker, I think. No, we'll keep the Nutcracker. Do we want to keep the Nutcracker? I think we'll get rid of the Whistling Duck. We'll grab the Dunnock. And then we'll tuck Gannet. Um, oh man, neither of those are great, but Luzidi Bunting's fine. Okay, I was just trying to work out if, if uh, the partridge is good for a grain slip, but I don't think it is. So he's going to go for food 100%. I would say food, then play Waxwing, then lay eggs. That gives you the egg to play Kill Deer. So think that's the order I would be doing things in. Oh, Hummingbird, never mind. Okay. Free food is coming our way. Maybe I should have kept... Maybe I should have kept that Whistling Duck. Um, but a little bit of free food, if I can get this Dunnock down this round. Um, don't mind that. Don't mind that. So, we're just going to keep drawing. There we go. Uh, we've got a Crow. Maybe could have used that earlier. Blue Warbler is very nice. I will take that. Probably get rid of that Bunting. Ooh, black-headed girl. Um, oh, man. Is that going to be worth playing? I'm not sure. I'm honestly not sure. I would kind of quite like to see if I can find a meat swan or a chiff chaff. Um, so I can at least hit... Um, hit the citizen scientist a bit more easily. So we're going to take a worm because that is going to be the most useful food for us here. I would imagine Blue Throat is going to give a Cherry, because then he can play Waxwing and Killed It in the same turn. Um, but yeah, getting this getting this Swift down, we might be able to do some kind of pivot. Oh, it's a Seed. It's a Seed. Okay. Um, man. Do I play the Dunnock? Do I play the Dunnock? I think I do, but not yet. I've still got space on that blackbird, so I will draw cards once more. Okay. Um, Stella's Jay, I think you can go. 
It's cavity space. Um, it's cavity space. What don't I want? Probably. Probably you. Bells, Virio, quite nice. That's going to help the golden eye. But yeah, I might play. I might play Dunnock because that's that's then double, double eggs whenever he lays eggs. Helps with the center round. Clears out some black bed space. Yes, this killed it. Oh, so maybe he's not going waxwing. I think he's going to be spending so much time this round setting up this grasslands that he's not going to have time to play birds in the forest. Um, it's just gonna it's just gonna kill the tempo too much. So um, I think I might be able to get away with it now. Do you like this blue blue wind warbler as well? Do you like this blue wind warbler as well? Um, realistically, how many points is Dunna gonna get? It's gonna get me two eggs this round, maybe three. And then last round, he's definitely gonna play. He's definitely gonna play Benelli. I reckon he'll play one other bird. So that might be at most three more turns. So at most, it's going to be four or five eggs. So if it's any four or five eggs, that's already not as good as a blue wind warbler. So I'm kind of tempted. Honestly, I'm kind of tempted to, <laughs> to still play this black headed goal, but I think it's too late. Um, I think I might go for food here. Um, hopefully get some worms. Obviously the white slot's going to help. And then I can maybe do blue winged warbler and bells very back to back if needed. I can always see for that last turn, but definitely play one of them uh, for the end of the round. Uh, we'll go from there. So, man, that's rough. No, no, uh, no worms is painful, but I think, I think we'll take a cherry. We could also... We could play this. We could play this. Uh, this hermit thrush. That is good for the gold knight. To be fair, that is good for the gold knight, and it's still seven points. Yeah, how many points is he looking on right now? Twelve, twenty-four, thirty, thirty-two, thirty-seven, plus a bonus card. So we have got a bit of a lead, but we've got to factor in rough tucks. We've got to factor in. Benelli um, coming later. So, yeah, those are things to bear in mind. Points are points are on the way, I think. Oh, could I go? Could I go Crow? Crow Swift. Oh, more free food. Well, uh, oh man. Okay. If I give him a cherry, or if I take a cherry, I give him a reroll. But if I take a, a rodent, he's going to take the other rodent, and then next time he activates, I don't get to look at worms, and I, I want to look at worms. So, um, I don't care too much about giving him a reroll because he can get whatever he wants with the blue throat at the end. So I'll just take a cherry. Um, I don't have anything that eats rodents, so not too fast. Not too fast, but yeah. Well, there's some worms. I'm thinking I might need to do a grassland's pivot um, just for the end of round, but I'm really hoping I can find. You know, I'm really hoping I can find Eastern Imperial Eagle, but even just a Goshawk or um, something like that, just to be able to easily hit that. That would be nice. So there we go. Oriole is now full. We get a worm anyway, so we don't mind that. Um, I wonder if he's serving up some kind of double forest play now. He's not got enough eggs to do a triple play, but he has got lots of food. Um, I think it is still worth me getting some forest birds down, so... Yeah, at the very least... At the very least, I think Bell's very needs to go down for more egg space uh, for this Golden Eye. And we'll look at bonus cards see what we get, so... Bell's Rear goes down. Bird counter. Bird counter, what a pull that is. Um, okay. That justifies a bit more of the late game. Um, the late game grass and pivot, I think, as far as I'm concerned. So, Yeah, because now this Swift is four points. 
Um, that's going to be really, really nice. So, yeah, we'll see what Grange Love does. Um, I'm expecting a double forest play. Yeah, there we go. House right into Turkey. Lots of egg space there. Uh, but I think we will just retaliate with. What will we retaliate with? Oh, this is kind of tricky. I could easily go. It's whether I go. Do I go Hermit Thrush in the forest? And then maybe put Warbler in the grasslands? Or do I put Warbler in the forest and maybe put Bustard in the grasslands? I think I'm going to go Thrush. I think I'm going to go Thrush. That'll clear, clear out a couple of spaces here. So we go 64, 68 with end of rounds, not bad at all. Um, yeah. That rough has not got as many tucks as I would have thought. Maybe that is why the Waxwing's not gone down. Because um, he needs extra rough tucks. And of course, Benelli coming later. Um, you need to see some cards there, so. I don't know. I might have been tempted to go Waxwing over Hummingbirds. Because Hummingbird has is, is helped me a lot here. It's helped me a lot, especially this end around. Um, a few costs to play bird. This could be very, very nice. So, okay, uh, pretty crummy looking tray. If I'm going to be honest, um, but I'm definitely anticipating a bit more free foods. Um, so, I would like to draw cards, and then if I get. I think I just need I need a free worm and then anything else. So if he activates Hummingbird once, I'm I'm set. I can just play Warbler and Swift and then legs a couple of times. I think that'll work. Um, but right now, I mean, even if I legs later, it's five points. Right now, drawing cards is five points, and I might find I might find an eagle. So um, we'll draw cards, and we're getting all the <laughs> all the tucking birds now. Uh, I think Maganza could go. Ooh, Raven might have been nicer earlier for a pivot. That can definitely go. Oh, there's the Chiff Chaff. There is the Chiff Chaff. Um, do you know what? I think there's still time. I think there's still time to make that worthwhile. Because I can play it. It will hit. It will hit Citizen Scientist. I can. I can't max it out, but I can at least get the lower bounds. It's going to hit Bird Counter, so even playing it's three points. And then look at all these extra cards I've got. So, yeah. I will do a bit of... I will do a bit of sums here. But I think that would be worthwhile, because... Right now... I draw three... Tuck one of the Blackbird, but then get one back off the goal. So I'm gaining three a turn. So if I play the Chiff Chaff... I'll be down... If I tuck another five, I'll be down to losing two a turn. I've got, I've got more than enough. This could be a this could be a super late game chiff chaff that actually makes sense. Okay, more free eggs, which we like to see. Okay, so you switch off the hummingbird, which actually, yeah, I don't think I'm going to get all the food I need. So we'll play chiff chaff. Um, we are going to have I don't know how many turns we've got? Yeah, this is perfect. We got three turns, so we can clear off the two egg spaces here. And then we'll just go tucking. We'll just go tucking. So this gotta be this could be a ten point. Is it ten points? Uh no, it's uh it's nine points. I've been saying my wetlands is five points this whole time and it's only four. Um it's a nine point, it's a nine point activation for three turns. But yeah, I've never seen this. I've never had this in a game myself where you could play Chiff Chaff so late and have it still be worthwhile because, yeah, the bonus cards make sense for it. Um, all these spare cards make sense for it. So there's Benelli, as expected. Um, so we are actually tying on this in a round goal. Um, maybe even, if I do get one more free food, maybe even playing this Warbler could be worthwhile. But um, yeah, I'm getting so many points here. Oh, no, let's not talk that. Um, that it's not going to be a problem, so... Yeah, we just want to get rid of everything else. Even the Raven can go. And yeah, so many points. 
So many points here. There's the meat swan. <laughs> There's the meat swan. To be fair, Chip Chat better than meat swan in this case. But yeah, I would have... Man, I would have killed to see that in round two or round three even. That would have been super nice, but... Um, yeah, pretty pretty solid late game here, I think, for, um, for this Chiff Chaff to come down and just tuck all of the extra cards we've been drawing. This feels pretty solid. I do wonder... I do wonder if... Brainstuff has some extra cards to play. Well, if he's still using... If he's still using Hummingbird, he definitely does so. I think he has to play cards here. I think he has to. Eggs is just not good. He, you know, if you're skipping Killdeer, which he might not be able to do because he has rough, but you know, even if you skip into Killdeer, he gets three. Uh, well, he gets four, but then I get one back, so he's only getting three points every turn doing that. Uh, and I'm not going to run out of space this gold knight, so... There we go. Speaking of, another free egg. We like to see it. Just giving me more free food, but he knows with this uh with this chiff chaff down, probably not gonna be able to make use of it, so. Uh we'll tuck everything that we don't want. Spoonbill we can't play anyway. And yeah. I think the only thing that I could have drawn that would have been worth playing would have been the East Imperial. Um, because you know it's more points than my wetlands, but also helps within the round. But yeah, I don't know. Warbler, tricky to know if that's worth playing. Really tricky. Yeah, I think it might be. I think it might be worth playing here because it is a, it is nine points. It is nine points drawing cards. Because I get five of the Chiff Chaff, one of the House Finch, two of the Blackbird, one of the Gull. This is eight. Bonus cards I don't need to worry about. But if this ties the end around, because we know he doesn't have Eastern Imperial because he's just played that Red Top Hawk. And at best he could play, I don't know, an Osprey, but I think we saw the Osprey earlier and I don't think he grabbed it. And like, why would you want to play that uh, as your as your final as your final turn? Um, yeah, I think I think we play the Warbler here. I would I would like to do more tucking, but it's one point less, but if it gives me it gives me some margin in the end of round and I've got to think even if if it forces him to play another bird oh no, I suppose he could have Goshawk or something It's it's losing me a point. It's risking that point that is certain for the potential of maybe I gain three extra points from the end of rounds. Um, if I'm being completely honest, the odds, my expectation here is that he's going to lay eggs. Chuck the fish, lay five eggs, just take the pain of a mediocre last turn. And actually, to be honest... If he had Goshawk, let's let's logic this out. If he had Goshawk, he would have played Hawk in the wetlands. There's no reason you'd play Hawk in the grasslands there unless you're going to lay eggs on that last turn. So, he is going to lay eggs. He's not going to play another bird. So we should play... We should play the Warbler. And yeah, maybe... I think I did see a Painted Bunting. Maybe I could have been smart and kept hold of that. Uh, and won the end of round instead, but I didn't, so <laughs> what can you do? It's too late for that, but oh yeah, I think we might be tying all the end of round goals, that'd be quite funny. That would be quite funny. But yeah, Painted Bunting yeah, it's late eggs. Painted Bunting would have been another three for winning the end of round, so it would have made up on the three point deficit, um, and it would have given another bonus card with three star nests down, I would have had a great chance of that, so um that was a mistake. That was a mistake. But I will say, I feel like even with that Benelli going down, uh, I'm imagining it. There's a rodentologist or a falconer in uh, in hand for Doctor Greenstuff. But 
I think we're pretty strong here. We're scoring over 110. Um, and that's just so hard to beat. So we did tie all the end of round goals. And here we go into the score. So yeah, I think bird points, to be fair, might be quite close. Because we have quite a lot down as well. Yeah, only three behind there. And no bonus card points. Okay, that's painful to see. That's painful to see. As I said, tied on the end of round goals. Eggs pretty close. Food on cards, I don't think either of us had any, but yeah. Tuck cards, shift chaff certainly for me, really helped out a lot there at the end. And it is a big win in the end. 112 points, so 83. So yeah, we didn't have to worry about um, the blue winged warbler, painted bunting misplay. We didn't have to worry about the three extra points at the end of rounds. We probably could have just tucked, but um, yeah, there we go. Late game chiff chaff pays off. Helps me on citizen scientist. Helps me on birth counter. Um, what did what did Green stuff? Wildlife gardener. That's painful. That's painful to keep that and and only get one down. So that's wingspan. That can happen sometimes. But that was a good game. That was a fun one. Um, and yeah, happy to have got that blackbird at the start for sure. Um, if I'd got Benelli instead, I don't know if I'd been able to make this work because. Yeah, just having the gull and the blackbird down gave me so much flexibility early on to just draw cards. Found the house finch, got the aureole, um, and yeah, that golden eye. That was such a nice um, kind of preemptive counter before the killer even went down, but um, got me plenty of free eggs indeed. So there we go. Thank you everyone for watching. Um, do stay tuned for more gameplay videos. As I said at the start, this is a best of three, and this is only game one, so uh, we will have at least the game two and potentially a game three coming up as well. Um, so yeah, hopefully I will see you again in, uh, in a future part, maybe in this series or maybe in just another gameplay video.